Hi, and welcome to What the Phalange, the podcast where we watch every episode of Friends, discuss it, deconstruct it, and fan over it one episode at a time. My name is Quinn, pronouns Zizier or they, them. And my name is Emily, pronouns she and her. This week, we're not watching or deconstructing any episode of Friends. Instead, we're going to talk about why we're not deconstructing anything. This past week, we had a close-to-home pandemic scare that derailed our plan slightly, but alas, we had to figure it out. So today, let's chat about that. How's it going? Um, better than you, I think. <laughs> it's been a long week. Tired. Yeah. The but pandemic also... isn't over just because you're over it. <laughs> do, 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 do. So, okay, let's start with the fact that both Emily and I have been extremely conservative throughout this pandemic. Yeah, we're like, I think that there's like two people, two main groups of people within the pandemic. And I read this interesting article the other day around the psychology of it, where it was like, there's the one group that are not doing anything and they're just living their lives the way they would live their lives Mm. and they're only doing the bare minimum of what is required by law wearing a mask sometimes a mask that goes only over your mouth and not over your nose oh my god insert meme of penis hanging out of pants yeah so good (laughs) putting your underwear on without putting your penis in your underwear anyways continue yes and then the other one is and the other one is people who then compensate for these people by being particularly thoughtful in every single thing that they do. Thoughtful? I'm glad you're using that word (laughs) and not paranoid. (laughs) Intentional, paranoid, all interchangeable. That's really nice. All right, cool. I'm glad you think I'm thoughtful and not just highly anxious. (laughs) I mean, you definitely are, but I'm also talking about myself. And I mean, I do, I am often coming from a place of anxiety, but also a place of like feeling societal responsibility. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think that like, okay. So yeah. So for the past six months, Quinn and I have not done anything. We've also been living in a a fairly large pod because everyone in our family moved back home. Yeah, so we were eight people in our pod, well, seven plus a baby. Baby. Um, shout out to Nora. Um, <laughs> Who you will not hear crying today in our podcast. because yes, she's The first not here. one. So, yeah, so we were eight people in our little pod. Um, and then, uh, and we're still eight people in our pod. So we're still eight people in our pod, except for a few pod members are currently living in Toronto, but they come and go whenever it makes the most sense. Um, so we're quite a big pod, which means we're quite entertained within ourselves. Um, but it also means that we're not going anywhere. So for context, we're staying at our parents' house. Our dad works at an office and he goes to his office every day of the week. He's with coworkers and you don't need to wear a mask when you're in an office setting as long as you are six feet apart. So he has been going to work not wearing a mask, you know, that's his life, okay, he's pretty cool, he's pretty cool, he's pretty comfortable, my partner has been going to Fairview, which is a nearby mall close to us, um, shout out to the West Islanders who know Fairview, um, (laughs) and he's been working there since June, they reopened in June, and he's been having to wear a mask every day for eight hours. For the record, we are currently in Quebec, and, uh, Yes. And so everyone is following the laws down to a T and being particularly careful with, we have a designated bathroom in our house that is for people who are entering the house for the first time after having left it, where they have to wash their hands and use mm-hmm. uh, recycled paper towels. Recycled yeah. meaning the process, not that we've used them before. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> gross. Um, so we're taking this thing pretty seriously. We're being very cautious. We are making sure, um, mostly for a couple of reasons. I think, uh, one, because I have a lot of anxiety around medical things in general. I'm very anxious about 
things that involve doctors and hospitals and any form of diagnosis. It just scares the shit out of me. Um, so I'm very anxious about that. And then we're also living with our parents who are 60 years old. Yeah, so exactly. It, it, there is also a feeling of responsibility to our parents and making mm -hmm. sure that they stay healthy. So <laughs> both of our parents are pretty healthy, good to go, um, except for the fact that they're almost 60, which means once you move into like the 60 category, you get to be higher risk according to COVID experts. And then also at the beginning of the pandemic, they weren't 100% sure how the virus was affecting babies. Um, and so we had our niece staying here. So we wanted to make sure, cause she was, um, I guess at the beginning of the pandemic, she was only four months old, four or five months old. Um, and so we wanted to be extra careful to make sure that there was no, um, no fear of transmission to our little baby Nora too. Except now she's like a super sturdy baby and good to go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Toss her around like football. She's got if a helmet. You can pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's a big baby. She's very cute. Um anyways, yeah. So all that to say that we have been very cautious and very um like on on good days we're cautious, on bad days we're paranoid. Let's say that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do you think that that was enough pretext, pre-context? So much pre-context. Okay. So finally, this past Friday night, not this Friday, so Friday before we released our our last podcast, actually, we we all decided to do something social. We decided to do something social, da, 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 da. because we also decided that the second wave is coming. Yeah, we decided and winter second, is coming. <laughs> winter is coming. Yeah, we decided we were like. Our aunt works within the government in Ontario, and we were just having this conversation around, like, this is really the time to, like, make a few of those, you know, more risky sort of moves. Like, get out of the house, go see the world, because it's possible that in a few months we're going to be locked down anyway again, and mm -hmm. if we haven't taken advantage of this time, it might be really tough on our mental health over, like, the long haul. Like, like look at it as trying to make this sustainable. Yeah. So... So yeah, so on Friday night, Quinn went to a bonfire with many, many people, but practiced um, social distancing measures, uh, wore a mask whenever possible, I'm assuming? No. Okay, you tell me what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I went to a bonfire and I, it was a little, to be honest, it was a little stressful because the space... Even though it was outside, uh, it was by a riverbank and in Verdun, and we just didn't have all that much space to spread negotiate uh, full spreading out. And I think there was a lot of people who were within the same pods together that were there. Mm. So it just made for like, just makes for strange socializing dynamics, guys. Yeah. Especially also like, A, I haven't really socialized with anyone yeah. in a very long time. And B, I didn't know a lot of people there. And I was just, anyway, socializing is yeah. weird. Yeah. It's already weird. And then add not having done it in a long time. Mm -hmm. Rusty. Yeah. Anyway. And then also Ellie decided to meet up with a friend that yeah. she's been trying to meet up with. Yeah. So I decided to meet up with a friend who I haven't seen in a very long time, mostly because I haven't Whose seen... Whose name her. we will give as... Well, we'll make up a name for this person. Oh. I was like, I don't want to say... I don't want to say their name. Um, Bob. <laughs> That's a good sturdy name. <laughs> I haven't seen Bob in a long time because this pandemic is freaking me out as I gave context to before. Um, and so I haven't really wanted to socialize. I felt uncomfortable with the way, like I, I have a hard time talking about my own boundaries. So I didn't want to go socialize and have to be like the big party pooper. Cause I'm a party pooper. If you've met me, I'm a big party pooper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Quinn Emily, is nodding. Emily's a stickler for the rules. <laughs> I'm a really big stickler for the rules. I'm like the worst anarchist you've ever met. But um, <laughs> like, I just like, I really love rules, okay? Rules help to control the fun. <laughs> Bonus points to if you recognize that quote. And so I love to follow the rules. And so I'm very much a stickler for them. And so whenever I go to do things related to anything ever, I need to follow the rules. And so COVID is one of them. So I am very intense about following social distance protocols. And I have a hard time communicating that sometimes because I don't want to be a big bummer. Um, so I didn't want to necessarily hang out with people and then have to be the big bummer who tells everyone to follow the rules. So finally, um, I decided, okay, Emily, second wave is coming. Winter is coming. You got to do something. 
So I went out on Friday night with Bob. We decided to go down by the water and we got at, we got pizza and we were outside the whole time. So we met up, we were outside, we got a pizza. Um, we sat on the same blanket, but I have a very large blanket. So we each sat on different ends of the blanket and it's about six feet in length. So we were like, or a little bit longer than six feet in length. So we were six feet apart. When you bought the pizza, did you go inside? No, that's another thing. Okay, so we were at a restaurant and they make really good pizza for the record and they bring the pizza outside to you and it's oh, all takeout. Awesome. So the streets in Point Claire are a little bit narrow down by the water. So we had to be um, a little bit kind of closer together as we were walking on these, along the streets. Um, we didn't put masks on at that point, but I tried to stay as six feet apart mm -hmm. as possible, closer to four feet. And so we did our best to social distance. The only moment in which there was like kind of a sketchy thing was that we ordered a pizza together and then we realized that they didn't give us any napkins um, or any, uh, and we both forgot our hand sanitizer. So we had the pizza and we had the idea that like I was gonna hold one side of the pizza and they were gonna hold the other side of the pizza and then we tugged on the pizza and then the pizza came apart. And so that's how oh, that's we made so sure cute. we did, it was like wishbone style. So we made sure we didn't touch each other's pieces. Then we opened the pizza box and one side of the pizza box was their plate and the other side of the pizza box was my plate. So our hands, got closer than six feet apart, but our faces did not get closer than six feet apart. And <laughs> I our, think it's the face that's the most important obviously, part. Obviously, yeah. And we never, we never touched, we didn't hug, we never, um, the only thing was that like, we touched the same pizza box and we touched the same blanket, okay? Um, now, all this to be said, that then I went home and I was like, whew, I socialized, oh my God, proud of me. Went out, socialized, did a thing, finally. Flash forward to the next morning, we went to Toronto. We decided to leave, oh yeah. So we, so essentially Mark, Ali, and Nora went back to Toronto. So they're still part of our pod, mm -hmm. um, but they basically went back to Toronto to go see, you know, access Doctors. their healthcare, all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, and then their upstairs neighbor went away for a period of time and offered to let us stay there for a couple of days so that mm -hmm. we could go be with them, see Nora and Mark and Ali. And, mm -hmm. and then, and be part of our, you know, our little satellite pod. And so Emily and Elias went up that day. Yeah. So we went up Saturday. We spent the day with them Saturday. Um, uh, no problem at all. Just hung out, whatever. Then on Sunday night, we get a phone call from my friend, Bob. For the record. I was driving in. Yes. Quinn was I literally on the road driving in. Just arrived. And I walk in mm -hmm. and Emily is on the phone. Right? On the, I think it was like you were just hanging up and calling Mark and Ellie to talk to them. Yeah, okay. And essentially Emily had gotten some big news. So essentially I found out on Sunday night that my friend Bob, who I'd hung out with on Friday, um, goes to school um, and there, someone in their class tested positive for COVID-19. Now, this is a manual therapy school. I'm not going to be more specific than that. No, I don't need perfect. to be. Um, so it's a manual therapy school in which the, the student, there's 25 people in the class and the students get quite close to each other. And as a massage therapist who yeah. went through massage therapy school, manual therapy, it's very often that your face is less than a foot away from another person's face. Yeah. And the reality is that I think we've all worn enough masks and if you've ever put glasses on, you can definitely see where the air shoots out. And I feel like yeah, it's not all sealed in there. <laughs> yeah. So, so yes, everyone was wearing masks in the class um, unless they were further away than six feet. Um, and so they were taking all the precautions necessary, but it was full day classes for four days straight. Um, and my friend Bob finds out on Sunday afternoon that someone in their class tested positive on Sunday, which means they took a test on Friday and got their results on Sunday saying they were positive and they were coming to school. They had no symptoms. Yeah. No symptoms. And I think it's just an interesting point here where the school was set up so that if you missed uh, yeah. any like chapter which is like those these like 40 modules periods, any yeah. modules you basically just have to do it the year after which means that you would prolong your graduation date for an entire 
year and they weren't making any exceptions within the realm of COVID. Yeah. There's not very many. Yeah. And not usually much anyway. a lot of manual therapy schools are private and they're expensive. Like it's not cheap mm-hmm. to do this. And so I could, I definitely, even though I think it was really irresponsible for this person to find out that they were exposed to COVID, went to get tested and then continued to go to school and work closely with people for multiple days. I definitely understand why this person did it. And yeah, it just like amplifies the need for uh, there to be more leniencies in these ways so that there's less punishment for people who are either yeah. sick or, you know, possibly exposed to COVID. Totally. So, yeah. So then, uh, so we were in this situation in which we were like, okay, well, we have to wait until my friend finds out if their test's positive in order for us to get tested. Um, so we don't need to go through all the details of our anxiety over the weekend, but, um, we decided to come home on Tuesday, despite not having heard yet about the test. Well, also, first of all, to give you a setup of what our plan was for the week, because either way, we were going to be recording the podcast and getting it up that week. We had decided that we were going to, we were thinking of spending the first few days above Mark and Allie's place in their neighbor's apartment. And then when they came back, that we were going to go stay in Markham, where we have a grandfather who's living alone. And we would... Who already had COVID. Who already had COVID. So it's COVID proof. Possibly, although the science is out on that. Yeah. Um, and we would stay there, and we then therefore set up and record out of this house. And we'd try it out because we were thinking of possibly moving in there. Because totally. essentially, we we're going to be in Toronto for the entire week, and we we're going to have a place to record. Mm-hmm. But then what kind of happened was that we get this news, and we definitely can't go to Markham at this point because um, there's a slight overlap. And so if there was that that slight chance that we were going to test positive for COVID or that Emily was going to test positive, and at this point, Elias and Emily sleep in the same bed. And we had taken a five-hour car ride together in the same car to come up to Toronto. Like Also, we, you oca- occasionally kiss. We occasionally give each other kisses. Um, it would be very un. It would be very unlikely that if I tested positive for COVID, that Ilias would not, given the circumstances. And then at that point, I was already like I had just gotten to Toronto, and then was destined to like basically live in the same space and share a bathroom with you guys. Mm-hmm. And so it was sort of like Emily had COVID, and it was most likely that Ilias was going to have COVID, and then that would also mean that I was possibly going to have COVID. Mm-hmm. And even though. We tried to social distance. Yeah, when we found out that there was a chance that my friend was going to test positive, we decided to social distance away from Quinn. Um, But we were still in the same apartment because we were still living in the same space. Yeah. um, And sharing a bathroom. Yeah. So it's not real social distancing when you're doing that. Yeah, exactly. So we were being careful, but the reality is is that Mm -hmm. there's some overlap. And so so we definitely couldn't go back to Markham at that point. Mm -hmm. And then we also couldn't possibly stay in the apartment because if the people who owned the place came back, we didn't want to have just left and left a bunch of COVID vapor into the, in the apartment. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure to leave as, as soon as possible, pretty much was the idea. But we were also in this limbo. We were like, where we were like, if our friend, if my friend comes back negative, then all of this stress is going to be for nothing. Right? So it was... It was this weird limbo place where we were just stressed and pretty much just waiting. We were sitting there waiting. And so um, we just didn't get to doing any of the podcast things, mostly because it was incredibly stressful. Um, And I think that like, I think it's an important lesson in the ways in which like sometimes shit doesn't go the way you want it to go. And, like, rather than, like, panicking and, you know, being like, oh, my God, like, our whole plan is ruined. It's just a matter of taking a couple deep breaths, letting it go, and catching up when you can, you know? Exactly. And I think that, like, that's been a really important lesson, I think, throughout this entire pandemic is, like, the idea that, like, sometimes shit happens that you 100% cannot control. And, like, you can either panic and, like let capitalism win with the need of like you having to just be like productive and make sure it happens anyways. And like take all of the, the, 
like, you know, put all your energy into it, even if you're like burnt out and tired and anxious and like having mental health drainage. Um, but rather than doing that, just taking the time to, you know, get your bearings, take care of yourself and then. And reset like realistic expectations and ideally try to communicate it properly to everyone, Mm -hmm. which we probably could have done better in our situation, the communication part. But we did try to reach out to everyone, and that's why we're also releasing the podcast today, just so that anyone who doesn't follow us on Instagram or Facebook or Patreon can know why there's no uh, podcast today. Exactly. So So then we decided that we would just leave. Yeah. So we left. And in the car ride, you get a phone call. Yeah. In the car ride, right after we had just stopped off in an en route... We get a phone call that my friend did test positive in the end. And this is Tuesday, right? This is Tuesday. So two, 48 hours after they got tested, they got a positive result. Um, and so we, uh, I, I went into a bit of panic mode because now at this point I had potentially, if I had COVID-19, then I would have, uh, Elias and I would have spread it to Mark, Allie, and Nora because we hung out with them for a whole day and a half. When we found out that I could have been um, positive, well, could could have been positive, and my friend could have been positive. Basically, we started social distancing for Mark and Allie. We didn't go into their apartment anymore. Um, so we took all the all the proper precautions the moment I got that phone call. Um, and and you know, there's a lot of lines in between, right? Like it was my friend who was waiting for their test. Um, and so we didn't even need to take a test yet, but we were still being cautious with the people that we were hanging out with mm-hmm. because that's how just, it spreads. That's just how it spreads, right? right? It's, it's just like so obvious in this, like it was just so real in that situation where it was yeah. like, well, we don't actually know. And maybe the likelihood is possibly small, yeah. but at the same time, this is exactly how it spreads. Yeah. As people thinking that everything's okay, not having symptoms. And so just being like, oh, whatever, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then, you know, uh, you yeah. Know, having, and then, so throughout that time, basically since I got the phone call from my friends saying that they got tested and they were waiting for their test results, they started having symptoms. So that's when I was like in my head really thinking, okay, they probably have it. So we really should be cautious. Um, and so when we got, we got that phone call saying that um, my friend got uh, got their test result back as positive. We um, basically looked up the the closest uh, COVID nineteen testing testing center to our parents' house, so that when we drove when we were back in Montreal, we could go right away to get tested without even going home first. Um, so that's what we did. Elias and I got tested right away. And then you get there and the first place is closed. So they the basically first place spent is the Tuesday evening running around Montreal trying to find a place to get tested. Yeah. Well, luckily the second place was successful. Um, and we got there about 20 minutes before it closed and we were the only ones in the center. And by the time we left, they were closing. Like it took us about 20, 30 minutes in there because... I was very stressed and anxious and aloof. And so they had to ask me to write down my email address like four times and I kept getting it wrong. <laughs> I didn't no. tell you that. <laughs> yeah, not four times, but like they kept and then they got the wrong address and it was just a whole big thing and I was panicky. So I couldn't really like gather my thoughts properly. And it was all in French, which was like super stressful for me as well. So um, I like I can handle things in French. The stress in French is, is significantly harder for me. Yeah, no kidding. Um, and so... So, but then also, why don't we explain... Because I ended up getting the test the next day. Mm-hmm. I was probably about 20 minutes behind them driving, and I just didn't feel like I was going to make it in time. For yeah, it. you wouldn't have made it in time. Um, so I ended up going the next day. Um, but why don't we share what it was like to get the COVID test? Yeah, sure. Okay, you walk in first... They told us to take off our reusable masks and put on their masks. Yeah. First, hand sanitize before we took off our mask. Take off our mask, put on the fresh one. Um, then they told us to pull out our Medicare card and then hand sanitize our Medicare or, or wipe, use uh, disinfectant wipes to wipe down our Medicare card. Um, and then throw out the disinfectant wipe in a garbage can and then go into the center. Um, yeah, for me, it was uh, similar. I walked up. And then they told me to take off my reusable mask, put it in my pocket. They immediately handed me a, like a, I guess, medical mask and I put it on Mm -hmm. and they dumped, (laughs) 
like so much hand sanitizer in my hands mm -hmm. and they were like wipe down everything yeah. <laughs> so it was like wiping down my medicare cards and my phone mm -hmm. and they asked me to type out onto my phone my email address and phone number yeah. in advance they asked me to do that as well but I got flustered by the time it happened that I forgot that I did that. It, it was just a whole big thing. Anyways, so then we walked it down the hall, you get into the medical center and there's a lot of, there was a lot of nurses for us. Like a lot of people were in there. They basically told us that we needed to give our email, our phone number. Um, and they said that if it's a negative result, they will email. If it's a positive result, they'll call because they need to find more. They need to gather more information if it's a positive result. Yeah. And it's a, and it will take 48 to 72 hours to get your results. Yes. Um, so then, yeah, then we sit down. Um, I was asked to re to take my mask just down to my mouth, so no longer covering my nose. Um, they kindly explained what the test was going to entail. Um, and uh, first they asked us if we had any symptoms, why we were coming in to get tested, so what had happened that led us to come in to get tested. Um, and so we explained the whole situation, um, and then they stuck a huge ass Q-tip up our okay, nose. Wait. For the record, though, and even though this Q-tip is extremely long, okay, because I've heard like, oh, it's a really big Q-tip. It's actually very, very, very fine, thin. Yeah, yeah, it's a very thin one. And so I had this moment when they pulled it out that I was like, that's basically like a needle. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it I wasn't a needle at all. It had like this tiny, tiny little bit of swab at the end. Mm -hmm. You tilt your head back. And it just goes in so far up your nose that you didn't know your nose went that far. <laughs> yeah, and they swirl it around Ugh. for 10 to 15 seconds. Yes, and so it's not like they just stick it in there into an uncomfortable spot and they just leave it. They actually start to twist it. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you're getting rug burn on this very obsolete, strange, very sensitive place that should never be touched ever. <laughs> but it wasn't so bad. No, sure. It's like, it's fine. It was just mm -hmm. a little overwhelming to my system. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and then they said that ideally, if you develop symptoms to come back um, about four to five days later to get another test um, to ensure that that one's negative um, as well. So to get like kind of like a double, a double negative. negative. Yeah. But because we had social distance, they told us we didn't need to quarantine for 14 days, which I think is a really important element of this story. Um, because um, everyone in Bob's class had to quarantine for 14 everyone days, Everyone right? in Bob's class had to quarantine. Um, but also, I think that we, as a, as, as a youthful group of humans underestimate the power of social distancing. I'm going to say that. And I think that, um, it's really important. And all that to say that our, we, we came home, we quarantined for until we got our results. Um, I got negative results. Uh, and then obviously Ilya did Quinn got negative results. So we're all negative. None of us have symptoms and it's now been, uh, more than a week since I've been in contact with my friend who got a positive result. Um, no one has symptoms, so we're good to go. Um, your friend on the other hand is quite sick. Yeah, my friend on the other hand is quite sick. But, um, the lesson of this story, the moral of the story, <laughs> um, is that, like, don't underestimate how much social distancing can actually have an effect on preventing the spread of this pandemic. Totally. Because if we had just decided to get even like a couple feet closer, if we had been a little bit more careless, like I could have potentially gotten COVID, spread it to Ilias, spread it to you. We, you know, we stopped at an en route on the way up. Um, you know, we then hung out with Mark and Allie and a baby. Um, so like there's so many steps mm -hmm. in which we could have potentially had a little mini pandemic on our hands, you know, like a, a mini outbreak, I should say, on our hands. Mm -hmm. And instead, it was cut short because of one instance of social distancing. Yeah. Um. So I think that, like, yes, go out. Don't let your brain get in the way of you socializing. But remember that social distancing is really, really important um, and could be, like, the way that we 
prevent this virus from really harming mm-hmm. our communities. How are you feeling now? Like I never want to socialize again. <laughs> No, I'm not feeling that way. I'm feeling like I, I'm actually really, I'm really happy because I'm. I it's good to know that I literally hung out for an evening with someone who was COVID positive. Like literally, they had the virus and they were sitting on my blanket, um, and and I didn't get it and I didn't spread it because we took these precautions. Which it's just I think it's really really like. Yeah, eye opening for me that I can still go out and do things as long as you know I'm smart and take yeah. the, the right precautions. Yeah, literally the whole time that this was happening, yeah. as we we're like kind of in that state of like, does this person have it? Does it not? You know, like just like that, you just don't know what's happening. Um, like the whole time, everyone was like, the one time Emily goes out and it happens to her. Yeah, like the one time, like I feel like, like this happens a lot to you. Like you have a fair yeah. amount of anxiety. You don't do things. And then you do one thing, the one time, and the one yeah. time it be- ends up being the worst case scenario. That's what people don't understand. Everyone's always like, oh, Emily, you're not going to break your foot. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then I walk down a fucking mountain, and on the last two steps of walking down a mountain, I break my foot. Or like, Emily, like, it's very rare to fall off your bike while you're just sitting on it. And Emily falls off her bike while she's just sitting on it and breaks her wrist. Like, yo, I'm anxious for a reason. Like... <laughs> <laughs> weird things happen to me there's like I, I have a poltergeist or something haunting me but yeah. what's what's really interesting is exactly what you said though that it's like you went out and you can go out and mm. you can literally hang out with someone who has covid and have take the proper precautions and it can be safe so long as you're doing the thing of social distancing wearing a mask you know yeah exactly back to regular schedule next week guys yeah um thanks for showing up uh this sunday and i'm sorry if you were disappointed with the content or (laughs) disappointed that we weren't watching that episode of friends but i hope you enjoyed our (laughs) little story (laughs) prolong our our longer than expected uh recounting of this week of ours Mm -hmm. um you can follow us on instagram at what the phalange as well as on patreon and facebook page and now on youtube as well and you can follow me on Instagram at Quinn K. Brunet or on my website, quinkbrunet.com. Yeah, you can find me at Emily B. Yoga or on my website, emilybyoga.com. That's Emily with an I-E, not a Y. Keep deconstructing the media you consume and social distancing and wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs>